It's good to be with all of you again today. Right now, we're going to start looking at equations of lines and planes. This lets us kind of put together the concepts we've been learning about vectors and also the dot product and the cross product and apply them to something that at first glance seems kind of familiar, then seems a little bit confusing and ends up being quite familiar after all. So here we go, equations, of lines, and planes. Equations of lines and planes. In this section, we will learn how to use scalar and vector products to write equations for lines, line segments, and planes in space. We will use these representations in chapter 13 and Calc 4, where the basic ideas will come up repeatedly. Lines and line segments in space. In 2D, a line is determined by a point and the slope. In 3D, a line is determined by a point and the direction of the line, which is described by a vector. Suppose L is a line in space passing through point P naught, X naught, Y naught, Z naught, parallel to a vector V, AI plus BJ plus CK. So here's our line L. It's passing through the point. And here is the vector uh, V. Then L is the set of all points P, X, Y, Z, for which P naught P is parallel to V. Then for some scalar parameter uh, T between negative infinity and infinity, the vector P naught P is equal to T V. So let's see if we can understand what this says. So looking at the picture, notice that this vector v here is parallel to the line. And so when we multiply the vector v by t, as is done here, what we're going to do is we're going to create vectors that are extensions forward and backward along V, which would also be parallel to this same line. So note that the value of T depends on the location of the point P along the line. Uh, so here is our equation. So notice that X minus X naught, Y minus Y naught, Z minus Z naught is equal to T times A, B, C. And where is that A, B, C? That A, B, C is referred to, those are the same A, B, and C that are in V. We can write this in I, J, K notation. So we have uh, X minus X naught I plus Y minus Y naught J plus Z minus Z naught K equals t times ai plus bj plus ck. And then we could expand all that and uh, and simplify. And we would get on the left side that xi minus x not i plus yj minus y not j plus zk minus z not k equals, and then we could kind of combine like terms. And so here we're going to separate out all of those uh, negatives. And so we have xi plus yj plus zk minus x naught i plus y naught j plus z naught k, the quantity, equals. And here, uh, notice we've been copying down our right side. Here we can keep that left side in place and then move the negative chunk to the right-hand side here. And then we still have this chunk over sitting over here on the right side. And we're going to label the bit on the left. Let's call it the pink bit. We're going to label that as R, the R vector. 
we're going to label this blue bit as R0. And the green bit, we will call T times V. And T here, recall, T is a parameter. A parameter is sort of a, a fancy word for variable. So let's look back up at our picture for a moment. And what this equation tells us is that to find the line L, we start by going up the R0. So R0 is the purple amount. No, sorry, R0 is the teal amount. So we go up R0. And then we're going to go over some green amount. You ask how much green amount are we going to go over? Well, it depends upon that T parameter. So maybe we go over one V length. Or we go over, if T equals two, we go over two V lengths. Or maybe T equals negative three. And so we come back one, two, three, three V lengths. And so by letting t uh, vary uh, as a parameter, we get the whole of line L. If r is the position vector of the arbitrary point p, x, y, z, and r0 is the position vector of the point p0, which is x0, y0, z0, then the vector equation of L is r equal to r0 plus t v. And here, perhaps for the first time in the class, I'm going to just simply say, memorize this. This can be written a number of different ways, as you've already seen above. But if we break it out into IJK notation, you can think about the R as being xi plus yj plus zk r not be x not i plus y not j plus z not k and tv would be tai plus tbj plus tck we can combine like terms uh, Notice in this next set, we break out the I's, J's, and K's, and they're combining like terms. And we're left with XI plus YJ plus ZK equals the quantity X naught plus TAI plus the quantity Y naught plus TBJ plus the quantity Z naught plus TCK. And then going into more traditional uh, vector form, we would have the vector XYZ equals the vector x naught plus ta, uh, comma, y naught plus tv, comma, z naught plus tc. Notice, in case you're missing it, we're just saying the stuff in front of the i's becomes the first component. Stuff in front of the, front of the j's becomes the second component. Stuff in front of the k's becomes the third component. So it's just uh, multiple notations for the same thing. Let's look at a couple manipulates that show this. So here is our black line L. Here's our point P naught, which equals uh, X naught, Y naught, Z naught. And then we have all these other points that are on the line. So P represents any arbitrary point on the line. And we know that that line is gonna be parallel to that, that vector V, okay? So notice that when we uh, let our V be exactly exactly one. So the V here is the same length as V. It's like we went up the red vector to the point on the line, and then we went over one V. And then maybe we could go 
up the red vector and then over 1.82 V. Or we could go backward. We could go up to the red vector and then back negative 0.7 V. And so the parameter T is telling you how many of that vector V you want to travel along uh, the line. And to get there again, we start we start at the origin, we travel up to the point P naught, and P naught is given by uh, 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 P naught is the point, R naught is the vector that gets you to P naught. And so you travel up R naught to P naught, and then travel however many Vs you want along the line. You could think about the red vectors. It's like the the entrance ramp onto the freeway. So you get onto the freeway with your R naught, and then you travel for some amount of time in whatever direction that you want. Notice that if your point changes, okay, here my point has changed but my line is always staying parallel to the V vector. So I'm still always going to take, oh, we're taking a different entrance ramp to the line, and then we travel along the line. If my vector changed, then I would take that entrance ramp, but now I'd be traveling along a different freeway, so to speak. Let's look at a, look at a second animation of the same thing. Okay, here's a second animation kind of showing the, the same thing. And what I wanna draw out here is that the point P, uh, uh, that the line L is made up of points P that live on L and every point P on L can be made up by simply traveling along the entrance ramp R naught all the way to point P naught and then traveling a certain number of Vs until you get to P. So at first glance, this formula is a little bit intimidating, but by analogy, what we're saying is that that R naught, that's sort of like that entrance ramp. Entrance ramp to, lot, to the line. It gets you from the origin out to the line. And then V tells you the direction, like, oh, get on I-5. And then the T tells you how far to go in that direction. So it looks a little bit different, but it's actually not really uh, much different than things you've done in other places. Another way of writing the same formula would be as x equals x naught plus a t, y equals y naught plus b t, and z equals z naught plus c t. One thing I like about this particular representation is it's a hint of what we're going to call parametric equations um, that we uh, we will learn about when we talk about chapter ten, and we'll hit heavily when we hit chapter thirteen. So here, T is in the real numbers. These equations are called parametric equations of the line L through the point P naught, which is X naught, Y naught, Z naught, and parallel to the vector V, which is A, B, C. Each value of the parameter T gives a different point X, Y, Z on L. In general, if a vector V equal to A, B, C is used to describe the direction of a line L, then the numbers A, B, and C are called the direction numbers of L. If you will, they're sort of analogous to the slope. So example one, let's find parametric equations for the line through negative two, zero, four, and parallel to V equal to two I plus four J minus two K. And let's come up with two other points on this line. So here we can say R 
will be equal to the point that we care about, r naught, negative 2, comma, 0, comma, 4. And then we're going to add to that t times our direction vector, which would be 2, comma, 4, comma, negative 2. Let me make sure you're seeing what's going on here. So that negative 2, 0, 4 is the same as this negative 2, 0, 4. And the 2, 4, and negative 2 is the same as the 2, 4, and negative 2. So this is a parametric, is a one way of representing the equation of my line. If I wanted to write this parametrically, you could think about this as saying that x is equal to negative 2 plus 2t. Two y is equal to 0 uh, plus 4t, or 4t. And z is equal to 4 minus 2t. So these are giving you the same information. So it's just two representations for the same thing. If we wanted to find other points on the line, all we do is we pick a couple values of t. So if we wanted to find points on the line, we could let say t equal to negative two. And if t equals negative two, then our point would be at negative two plus two times negative two, looks like negative six comma negative eight comma four plus four or eight. So that would be a point on the line. Or if I let t equal three, then I would have negative two plus six, looks like four. Four times three, which would be 12. Four minus six, negative two. So these would be an example of two other points that are on the line. Coming back to here, another way of describing a line L is to eliminate the parameter T from the parametric equations. If none of A, B, and C is zero, we can solve each of these equations for T, equating the results, and obtain X minus X naught over A equals Y minus Y naught over B equals Z minus Z naught over C. These are called symmetric equations of L. Notice that the numbers A, B, and C that appear in the denominators are those same direction numbers uh, of L that we talked about earlier. That is, components of a vector parallel to L. If one of A, B, or C is zero, we can still eliminate T. For instance, if A is zero, we could write the equations of L as X equals X naught, and then Y minus Y naught over B equals Z minus Z naught over C. Just going back to the example that we have, notice that we have a um, we have a t in each of these three equations, and so in finding the symmetric equations, all you're doing is you're solving for each of those t's and then setting each of the little results equal to each other. In the particular example that is given here, where x equals x naught, this would mean that L lies in the vertical plane x equals x naught. Two lines in 3D are called skew lines if they don't intersect and are not parallel. If you think about it in, we could have parallel lines. Mm -hmm. You could have parallel lines. You could have lines that intersect, but you could also have lines that are not parallel that do not intersect. And so these would be examples of skew lines. So example two, the side of the following lines are parallel, uh, whether they intersect or if the lines are skew. So what I'm gonna look at first are the direction numbers. And I notice that these direction numbers are not the same and are also not, um, they are not the same and they are not uh, scalar multiples of each other. And so notice that uh, two, that if we, if you look at the X components, that the direction numbers is, are one and two, like they, they're double each other. 
And if you look at the Y components, uh, direction numbers, they are negative one and negative two, again, double each other. But if we go to the Zs, they're three and seven. These are not double, not the same pattern each time, uh, not scalar multiples. So this tells me that these lines are not parallel. So if they are not parallel lines, then we've got to ask this question of, do they intersect or are they skew lines? That is, are they like this or do they touch each other? So to do that, we would want to basically set these things equal to each other in order for them to intersect it would all have to be in the same place at the same time. And so you might set the lines equal to each other and say, well, that would mean that, oops, that x over 1 would have to equal x minus 2 over 2, which would tell us that 2x would have to equal x minus 2 or that x would have to equal negative 2. But as soon as x equals negative 2, we um, uh, we can come up, well, we can do the same thing with our y's. And we can say that uh, y minus 1 over negative 1 has to equal y minus 3 over negative 2 which would be the same thing as saying negative 2y plus 2 equals negative y plus 3, or negative 1 equals y. Just double check. Yeah. Uh, and already we can see that these are not going to intersect. So in order for this to be the case, here's the here's the point where it have to work at x equals negative two and y equals negative one. We haven't even played with the z's yet. But if we just take these two values and we put them in the first two, we could ask ourselves, can both of those be true at the same time? So we'd have negative two over one equal to question mark negative one minus one over negative one. So that would be negative two over negative one, which is positive two. That does not seem like it's going to work. So we found if they were going to match, we knew that the X coordinates had to match and the Y coordinates had to match and the Z coordinates have to match. So we let our X coordinates match and when the x-coordinates match, the y-coordinates would the y's would be in different places. So what this tells us is that they are not going to intersect, so the lines are skewed. Example three. Suppose we have two points, p, negative 3, 2, negative 3, and q, 1, negative 1, 4. Let's answer the following. So first, let's find parametric equations for the line passing through them. So we need to find an, uh, an R vector and a V vector um, and an R naught vector. So we could let our R naught vector equal uh, the position vector for point P. So negative 3 to negative 3. And we could have just as easily chosen Q. We would have gotten this. We'll get the same result. And then we can let our V vector equal PQ, which would be 
1 minus minus 3 or 4. Negative 1 minus 2 minus 3. And 4 minus minus 3 or 7. So we have our r and our v vectors, or r naught and our v vectors. So that tells us that the r uh, vector that's going to describe the line for the plane, which is r naught plus tv, is negative 3, 2, negative 3, plus t times 4, negative three and seven. It's a little sloppy, even for me. Negative three and seven. Okay. Uh, if you're trying to understand this particular notation, you could think about this like y equals, here's your y-intercept, and then here's your m and your x. It's kind of analogous to your slope-intercept form, except for instead of having a y-intercept, you have a point um, on the on the line. Instead of having a slope, you have a direction vector. Alternatively, if you wanted to represent this with the equations x for x, y, and z, just matter of preference, you would say that x equals negative 3 plus 4t, y is 2 minus 3t, and z is negative 3 plus 17. Notice parameterizations are not unique. There's an infinite number of parameterizations. Um, for example, if instead of using the p point, we'd use the q point, then in that case, we would have had a different representation. So here, notice that the negative 3, 2, and negative 3 that are showing up in our parametric equations are the same ones as in the point. If we'd use the Q point, then we would have had x equals 1 plus 4t, y equals uh, negative 1 minus 3t, and z equals 4 plus 7t. Here, notice that the I'm using the q point instead of the p point. You could have also chosen a, a different version of the, of the direction vector. For example, you could have used twice it. You could have used 8, negative 6, and 14, or the negative version, negative 4, 3, negative 7. So there's an infinite number of parameterizations. But continuing on, let's find the symmetric equations of the line. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, solve each of these parametric representations for t. And so when I look at my x's, I will get that t is equal to uh, x plus 3. Uh, divided by 4. And when I look at my y's, I will get that, that t is equal to y minus 2 divided by negative 3. And if we look at our z's, we'll get that our z uh, that t is equal to z plus 3 divided by 7. And so this equation that we're left with, this is what we call the symmetric equations of the line. The numbers in the denominator, oops, that color doesn't show up very well. Numbers in the denominator, well, those are the direction numbers, if you will. So, yeah. 
In C, we're asked, at what point does this line intersect the YZ plane? The YZ plane, this would be where X equals zero. So if we know that X equals zero, we can simply substitute that into our symmetric equations and see what good things happen. So we would have zero plus three over four. So this is from our X's um, equals Y minus two over negative three equals Z plus three over seven. And so looking at the first two, so we're looking at the, for the Y's, then we wanna solve three fourths equals Y minus two over negative three, or it looks like we have negative nine fourths equals Y minus two, or we add two to both sides, that'd be like adding eight fourths, we'd have negative one fourth equals Y. Looking for the Z value, we would have three fourths, the same three fourths equals uh, Z plus three over seven. So that tells us that 21 over four equals Z plus three. Subtract three from both sides, subtracting 12 from both, 12 fourths from both sides, that would give us nine fourths equals Z. And so the question is, at what point does this line intersect the YZ plane? So we would say we intersect the plane, intersect the plane at the point X equals zero, Y equals negative one fourth, and Z equals nine over four. Let's look at some manipulates. So here we're talking a little bit about projections, which is related, but, but not quite the same thing. So here you have a line and we could ask what happens if we uh, if we look at where that line projects onto the xy plane. And so if, if you think about a projection, this is a little bit getting ahead, but it sort of gives you an idea for what's going on. You could imagine a, a line directly below the, the green vector okay, that's along the xy plane. In our particular question, we were looking for where the green line intersects. So for us, we were looking for some point way back here in the distance. That was the point where the green line and the blue line would intersect. Let's look at a second manipulate. So again, we're looking at projections. Here's our line in three space. And uh, in the previous question, we were asking for something like, where does this line intersect one of the coordinate planes? We could talk about its projection onto the XZ plane. That's kind of what we were talking about before. And here is just a, a, a small chunk of the line segment. So when you think about how we make a line, okay, maybe you're given two points that are on the line and you take those two points that you're given, create a direction vector. And so we go from the origin out to a point 
and then along a line. If we want to get rid of one of the vectors, you could simply eliminate one of those vectors like we did here with setting y equal to zero, and then ask what happens to uh, the line when it's on whatever plane is left. Okay. So these two animations are not identical to the question we're looking at, but they give you a little bit of a sense for what the kinds of things that we can do with uh, lines in three space. Question uh, D is similar to what we were doing, but here, instead of wanting the full line, we're just wanting a part of the line. So pictorially, we had some point P and some point Q, and we've been looking for the whole line kind of in, in all directions from negative infinity to infinity. But in this question, we're not looking for the whole line. We're simply looking for a chunk of the line between two points. And so here we're going to come up with a different parametric representation. Here we're going to use a new formula. We're going to say that R is equal to that initial point, or the initial position, and we're going to take that initial position and we're going to multiply it by a one minus t, and then we're going to add to it the final position. And we're going to multiply that final position by t. And then we're going to let uh, t vary between 0 and 1. Here's what happens. When t equals 0, t equals 0, then we have r equals 1 minus 0 equals 1 times the initial position. And if t equals 1, well, you've got r equal to 1 minus 1 or 0 times the initial position plus 1 times the final position. All the terms in here are linear, so this would be a line that's going from the initial position to the final position as t goes from 0 to 1. Back to our example, in our particular case, we had p. Uh, point P being um, negative 3 to negative 3. And we had point Q given, which is 1, negative 1, 4. And so our line, putting all this stuff together, our line that we care about will be R of T equal to 1 minus t times the initial position vector, which would be from, for going from p, that would be negative 3 to negative 3 plus t times the final position, be the q vector, 1 minus 1, 4. So here we're going from that initial position here, and we're going to the final position, which should be Q, here. And this would be when. zero is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to one. So again, when time equals zero, you have one minus zero is one. So you'd have all green and no blue. When time equals one, you'd have one minus one or zero green and one blue, all blue. 
it's like a and if you were in the middle you'd have half green and half blue or three quarters green and a quarter blue and so you kind of have ratios of starting and ending points so that's how you parameterize the line segment joining two points well we've just done an example where we use this next formula so suppose that we want to find the equation of the line segment connecting the two points p naught the initial point an initial point uh, with position vector r naught and p1 the end point with position vector uh, r1 so if we let v equal r1 minus r naught then we get that r equals r naught plus tv or r naught plus t times r1 minus r naught equals 1 minus t r naught plus t times r1. So again, you start with the initial point, and here's our 1 minus t, and you go to that end point, and you have just the t in front of the end point, where r is the position vector for an arbitrary point p between p naught and p1. So we're looking for Oh, I don't have a picture of it right here. So this is the formula for the line segment from R to R1. And it's given by uh, the vector equation R of T equals one minus T times R naught plus T times R1 from zero less than or equal to T less than or equal to one. Whew. Well, now that you know everything there is to know about lines, let's talk about the equations of planes start, let's talk about two interesting relationships between a vector and a plane. A vector is parallel to a plane if it lies on the plane or else has no points in common with the plane. Uh, the latter happens when all the lines on the plane are either skew or parallel to that vector. Two, a vector is perpendicular to a plane if it is orthogonal to all the vectors on the plane. Suppose you have a point and a vector. How many planes exist that are parallel to the vector and include the point? Suppose how many planes exist that are perpendicular to the vector and include the point? So let's look at this first question. So how many planes exist that are parallel to the vector and include the point? So if here's our point and um, here and then we need a vector so here's our vector how many planes exist that are parallel to the vector and include the point well i hope you could see that there's actually an infinite number we could have this plane here would be include the point and be parallel to the vector we could have that plane there, which would include the point and be parallel to the vector. We could have this plane here, which would include the point and be parallel to the vector. So an infinite number. We could ask how many planes exist that are perpendicular to the vector and include the point. So suppose we have a new point in a new vector and we could ask how many planes uh, are perpendicular to that vector well in order to be perpendicular to the vector those planes are going to have to look something like that oh there's actually only one, one plane. So in the second part, how many planes exist that are perpendicular to the vector and include the point? There's only one. That plane is unique, which is pretty cool and is going to be very much to our advantage. So a plane is determined by knowing a point P naught, X naught, Y naught, Z naught on the plane and its tilt or orientation. This tilt is defined by a vector that is orthogonal to the plane. This orthogonal vector N is called a normal vector. So this is going to be a big deal. So we've got our orthogonal 
vector n. And this is the vector that is perpendicular to the plane. And then we also have some point p naught, which is living on the plane. So we've got one, one point that's given, and we've got a perpendicular vector. So if we let p x, y, z be an arbitrary point on the plane, here it is, uh, that contains p naught, x naught, y naught, and z naught. That's the point. That's the green point. Then n is perpendicular to p naught p. Where's p naught p? So p naught p would be this line from p naught to p. Ooh, that's an ugly looking perpendicular vector. Okay, so we want our vector n to be our vector n here to be perpendicular to that red vector p not p. And remember the relationship that really loves perpendicular vectors? Yep, that's right. That would be the dot product, right? The dot product eats perpendicular vectors for lunch. So as soon as we know that we have two vectors that are perpendicular, we've got this red, uh, not the red end, we've got the yellow n, And we've got the red p naught p vector. And we know that n is perpendicular to everything on the plane. And we use our dot product. We dot them. And we know that the result must be 0. So this is called the vector equation of the plane. Um, it's important to know, but don't memorize this. Don't memorize. At least this yet yet. Let's look at an animation. So the point P naught lives on the plane. It's just a point that's given on the plane. We we know it somewhere it was given to us. If I change that point, the whole the whole plane will change. And then we also have a second point on the plane. Okay. That's this P over here. And the black vector is going to li always is living on the plane. And what I want to point out is that the normal vector is perpendicular to the plane. If we change, if we had a different normal, then we must have a different plane, right? Because that normal vector has to be perpendicular to the plane. And so that normal vector, wherever we want to put it, or you know, whichever plane we have, is going to be perpendicular to every uh, to every vector that's on the plane. And that's why the dot product of these two vectors is zero. So the orientation of a plane is specified by a normal vector n. All vectors p not p in the plane are, are orthogonal to n. Not something you need to like memorize in terms of a diagram, but this is a very important relationship that we're going to use over and over and over again. So let's see if we can apply this concept. So if our normal vector n is equal to abc, then we can write abc, the normal vector, it dotted with x minus x naught comma y minus y naught comma z minus z naught equals zero. So let me make sure you're tracking. So this is your normal vector. And we're dotting it with this thing over here, which would be a vector on the plane. That's that vector. Um, uh, that lives on the plane. Normal vector dot vector on the plane will be zero. So we do our dot product and we take the first component, multiply it by the first component, and we get a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals zero. 
This is called the scalar equation of the plane. Uh, we can change the form of this equation by distributing a, b, and c. So we can just distribute through. And when we do that, we get a, ax minus ax naught plus by minus by naught plus cz minus cz naught equals zero. And we can separate out the things that have the x, y, and z's. These first terms here, these ones have variables. But all this stuff at the tail end, this is just a number. Because remember that x naught, y naught, z naught are just are just values. So since we know that a x naught plus b y naught plus c z naught is just a number here, we can call that number d. And so we can define the linear equation of a plane ax plus by plus cz plus d to be equal to zero, where d equals negative ax naught plus by naught plus c z naught. Note, generally we give our answers in either the form a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals zero, which highlights the normal vector and a point. So this form here highlights the normal vector and a point, or we could give it in the other form, ax plus by plus cz equals d, or sometimes we put the d on the first side, from which we again see the normal vector, but we can also easily find our three intercepts, assuming they exist. So just like with equations of lines back in pre-algebra and algebra one, where slope intercept form gave you a different thing than point slope form, give you a different kind of like obvious fact versus standard form, same thing is happening here. Let's look at this manipulate. So notice that the all the d is changing in this equation is it, it's it's not really changing the the y intercept because we aren't we aren't really going in the y direction but it is you can see that there's a relationship uh between kind of the height if you will of the plane and that constant that's that's there at the end and so the direction is given by the a's b's and c's So A's, B's, and C's will dictate your direction. Those D's at the end, that's just going to sort of change the height, if you will, of the planes. Let's consider another form of writing the vector equation of the plane. So if R equals X, Y, Z is the position vector of P, which is X, Y, Z, and R naught equals X naught, Y naught, Z naught is the position vector of P naught equal to X naught, Y naught, Z naught, then P naught P is equal to R minus R naught. Hence, we get that the normal vector dotted with R minus R naught equals zero. So once again, you've got the normal vector. This is the one that's perpendicular to the plane. And then we have R minus R naught. Those are all the vectors that are on the plane. When you dot them, you would get zero. This can be written uh, Alternatively is n dot r equals n dot r naught. Once again, I would say don't memorize. On the other hand, you should memorize these formulas up here. So this one's your friend, this one's your friend. Historical note, there are a lot of formulas in this section, which makes it easy to lose track of what you're doing. At the end of the day, you're just learning about linear equations. This isn't new, 
Rather, you've been exploring linear equations since pre-algebra. One variable, as in 2x plus 3 equals 4, and then in algebra, where you had two variables, as in 2x plus 3y equals 4, and later systems of equations such as 2x plus 3y equals 4 and 5x plus 6y equals 7, this section just expands linear equations and linear graphs into three dimensions. So in studying linear equations, you are carrying on an old tradition that spans at least uh, Africa from Egypt, the Middle East, Babylon, Asia, China, and eventually even Europe, uh, where they caught on once they adopted algebra from the Arabs and the number systems used in India. If this sounds cool, then you're going to love linear algebra, where you spend a full term studying systems of linear equations, including their many, many, many applications. Example four, find an equation for the plane through the point negative three, zero, seven that is perpendicular uh, to the normal vector five i plus two j minus k. Then find the intercepts and sketch the plane. So notice that you were already given a point and a normal vector. And so here's your point. And here's your normal. And so our plane will be uh, that normal vector, 5 times x minus negative 3 plus 2 times y minus 0, uh, minus 1 times um, z minus 7 equals 0. So your point is showing up here. And your direction, direction is here, 5, 2, and negative 1. We could expand this out. So this is the equation for the plane. We could clean it up a little bit if we were so inclined. So we have 5x plus 15 plus 2y minus z plus 7 equals 0 or 5x plus 2y minus z equals negative 22. So we've found an equation for the plane, we've got, and we've got multiple representations for this plane. So now we need to figure out our intercepts. So to figure out your intercepts, we will We'll ask what happens when we're on each of the coordinate axes. So let's think about this for a second. So notice when you're on the x, uh, you're going to have your x-intercept when y is 0 and z is 0. So if we set uh, y equal to z equal to 0. This would be like covering up uh, covering up the y's and the z's and just looking at the x. So 5x equals negative 22, or x equals negative 22 over 5. So here's one of our intercepts. And it's at negative 22 over 5. Okay. So then we could ask, uh, we could look for our y-intercept. And so our y-intercept is going to happen when we let x equal to z equal to 0. That's like covering up all the x's and all the z's. And if we do this, we're left with y equal 2y equals negative 22 or y equals negative 11. So it looks like this one's also back on the negatives. Okay. And lastly, 
we could try to find the z-intercept. So this would be where x equals y equals zero. Oops. And so we could cover up the x's and the y's, let those be zero, and we're left with negative z equals negative 22, or in other words, z equals 22 which would be some point up here. And so our plane is going to be what happens when we connect dots. So there's a, a plane formed. Um, and zooming back out, this plane, if we were to figure it out, would include the point negative three. So come back a little ways here up and seven. So our point must be somewhere right here. Here must be point P naught. And N would be perpendicular. Um, it looks like all of the components are positive. Oh no, except for the Y component. So it looks like our N vector would be pointing in and not out because it's got a negative uh, Z component. So in the past, we found the equation of a line that goes through two points. And earlier in this section, we even found the line going through two points in three dimensions. Well, now we're going to find the equation for a plane that goes through three points. And let's start by looking at a picture. Okay, so what I want to point out is that if you have three points, P, Q, and R, then from those three points, you can create two vectors. Once you have those two vectors, the cross product will give you a normal vector. And the you've got a you have a point, you have a normal vector, you can pretty easily find the equation of the plane. That's where we're going. Just like in the picture, we have points P, Q, and R. And so we can find the vector P, Q. This is uh, sort of like a Q minus P, so 1 minus 2, negative 1, 4 minus minus 1, 5, 0 minus 3, negative 3. And then we have PR, so PR would be 0 minus 2, uh, negative 1 minus minus 1 or 0, and 5 minus 3 or 2. So this is two vectors that are on the plane. So now we can find PQ cross PR. This will be our N or our normal vector. So N will equal I, J, K. And then we have negative 1, 5, negative 3, negative 2, 0, 2. So then we could ask how much is there in the um, in the i direction? And so what I do is I I mentally cover up the i component. Let's see if I can make that happen. Um, I don't think I can do it easily. It's like I cover up that part that's in the, it's there, and I look at the determinant of what's left. So I have 5 times 2 minus negative 3 times 0, or 10. 
And then I know the next value is going to be negative. And so I'm going to look for the J component. So I cover up, um, I cover up my J stuff and I take my determinant. So I have negative two times or negative one times two, negative two minus 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 six. So negative two minus six, negative eight, and it's going to be the opposite sign. So I'm going to get plus eight. And again, clear it off. And then I want to find my Z component. So I cover up my Z stuff, find my determinant, negative one times zero, zero, minus five times negative, negative two, which gives me 10. So this is my normal vector. So I've got a normal vector, 10, 8, 10. And I have a point. I've actually got three points to choose from. But since I've already been looking at point P, maybe I'll use point P um, as a reference point. And so my equation of the plane will simply be 10 times x minus 2 plus 8 times y plus 1 plus 10 times z minus 3 equals 0. And so these direction numbers showing up in front of the variables, and then the point is what's influencing the, uh, what I'm, the shift that's happening in the x, y, and z. Notice that the negative is built into the formula. And so this one up here would be minus, minus one, it's just like in point slope form back in beginning algebra. So now that we've learned about both lines and planes, now we can try to combine those concepts. So example six, what is the relationship between the line x equals eight thirds plus two t, y equals negative two t, z equals one plus t, and the plane 3x plus 2y plus 6z equals 6. How would you know if they're parallel? If they intersect, find the intersection points. So, well, at first glance, I'm not sure if I know. So let's see if we can, um, let's see if we can find the Let's see if we can figure out what we do know. So we know that on our plane, that we have a normal vector uh, n, which is 3, 2, 6. OK, well, that's good. And how about on our, uh, on our line? Let's see if we can find those uh, direction numbers. Maybe we will write this in, um, uh, maybe we could write it in the line in symmetric form for practice. So here we would have uh, x minus 8 thirds over 2 equals uh, y over negative 2 equals z minus 1 over 1. Okay. And so here, this is our this is the symmetric equations for the line. And notice that the direction numbers are 2, negative 2, and 1, right? And I think it should be pretty clear that the, the line and the plane are not normal to each other. So the direction numbers are, um, well, two, negative two, and one. 
Hmm. Let's see. So if our vector is, if our line is not perpendicular to our plane, we might also ask, is our line parallel to the plane? So, so far we've said that they're not parallel. And again, why do we say they're not parallel? We said they're not parallel because, um, sorry, we said they're not perpendicular. Maybe I'll do this one again. Example six. What is the relationship between the line x equals 8 thirds plus 2t, y equals negative 2t, z equals 1 plus t, and the plane 3x plus 2y plus 6z equals 6? How would you know if they're parallel? If they intersect, find the intersection points. Well, let's start by asking, answering the question of how would we know if they're parallel? So I would know if they were parallel if a vector in the direction of the line was also perpendicular to the normal vector for the plane. And so I noticed that my plane has a normal vector equal to three, two, six. And I notice that my line is uh, parallel to vector 2, negative 2, 1. And so we could take the dot product of these two. And if a line, if my normal and um, my parallel or perpendicular to each other, that means that my parallel line, my line is parallel to the plane. Um, we could try that really quickly. So we could test for parallel. So I'm going to go three, two, six, dotted with. 2, negative 2, 1, and that is 6 minus 4 plus 6, which is importantly not 0. So that tells me that these two vectors are not perpendicular, which is to say that the line is does not lie parallel to the plane. So adding a little bit of color here. I'm dotting that normal with the line that's parallel, the vector that's parallel to the line. Um, and all this stuff is a way of determining that the line is not parallel to the plane. Well, if it's not parallel to the, to the plane, then presumably it must intersect. So. Line intersect the plane. So if it does, then if I set the two of these equations or relationships equal to each other, it things should be true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the line parametric representation for the line, and I'm going to substitute that into the plane and ask at what time would both of these things be true? And hope we get a, a real number out the back end. So I've got to solve three times eight thirds plus two t uh, plus two times negative two t uh, plus six times one plus t equals six. And to try to bring these things to life, notice that uh, these quantities 
are all coming from the relationship at the top and then the um, the threes twos and sixes those are the threes twos and sixes from the equation of the plane that was given and of course the equation of the plane was equal to six which is where that six came from all right let's keep going and see what happens So it looks like we have eight plus six t minus four t plus six plus six t equals six or two t eight t equals eight fourteen equals negative eight. Mm -hmm. or t equals negative 1. Okay, t equals negative 1. That's great. Let's see. We're probably not sure what we've done. So if we back up a little bit, so we would say, I want to find the intersection point. I found the time. What I've done is I found the time when the line and the plane intersect. But the time is not a point in three space. So now I need to find the point. This is the parameter. Maybe the time. And so now we've got to find the point. So we know that the x value will be 8 thirds Uh, plus 2 times t, plus 2 times negative 1, which would be mm, 2 thirds. The y value will be negative 2 times negative 1 or 2, and the z value will be 1 minus 1 or 0. And so for our final answer, we get that the line and plane line and plane intersect at the point two thirds two thirds two zero Relationships between two planes can be described as uh, falling into one of the three, these three categories. Two planes are parallel if and only if their normal vectors are parallel. That is, n1 equals k n2 for some scalar k. Two planes that are not parallel intersect in a line. Note that the line of intersection is perpendicular to both planes normal vectors. That is, parallel to the cross product of the two normals. That's helpful, actually. And three, the angle between the two vectors planes is defined as the acute angle between their normal vectors. So those are a couple uh, of different relationships. A note about uh, number two. Every time you pick up a book, you can think about a book, the binding of a book, as representing the intersection where two planes are, are coming together. And so that binding represents the line where two planes come together. Example seven, suppose we have two planes, P1, which is 3x minus 6y minus 2z equals 15, and P2, which is 2x plus y minus 2z equals five. First, we wanna find a vector parallel to the line of intersection of the planes. So again, we think about the binding of the book. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to find a normal to each one of these two planes. Fingers are only so good here. Okay, we're gonna find a normal that's perpendicular to each one of these two planes. And then the cross product of those two normals will be parallel to the, to the binding or to the line of intersection to the planes. So we have normal one, 
will be three, negative six, negative two, normal two will equal two, one, negative two. And so their cross product, N1 cross N2 will equal, so you can imagine coming through here, and I'm, I'm not going to write down my i, j, and k. I'm going to get a little bit um, efficient. So you can imagine covering up the i stuff and looking at the determinant. So negative two, negative six times negative two, 12 minus minus two would be 10. 12 minus minus two would be 14. Um, and then we could cover up the y's. And here, of course, you have to remember the negative that's built into the formula. So negative six plus two, negative four. So I'm gonna get plus four. Clear. And then cover up the Z's. Three plus 12 is 15. And so this right here would be a vector parallel to the line of intersection. Great, so that was A. In B, we want to find parametric equations for this intersection line. Well, to find that parametric equation, we need both a point and a, um, we need a point and a direction. We already have the direction, that's nice. That was given here. And so all we really need is a point. This line, we need a point and direction. Nope, wrong one. We already have the direction, not the point. All right, so how are we going to find a point of intersection? Well, I guess we got to set the two things equal to each other and hope that it works. So imagine that, um, uh, and here's, the, here's what's important. There are an infinite number of points where these two planes intersect. Remember, there's that line where they intersect. And so all we need to do is find one point where they intersect. Hmm. Well, if we only want to find one point where they intersect, so we just need one point of intersection. So if we only need one point of intersection, maybe let's ask ourselves, um, I don't know, what would happen, let's, we get to arbitrarily pick, what would happen if x equals zero? So if I say, suppose x equals zero, I'm asking, where does this line, um, looking for the point where this line intersects the yz plane? It's possible that that doesn't happen, but probably unlikely. So if, if x equals zero, then plane one is going to reduce from, from 3x minus 6y minus 2z equals 15 to 
the x's are going to go away, and we're just going to have negative 6z minus 2, sorry, negative 6y minus 2z equals 15. And plane 2, which was 2x plus y minus 2z, will equal 5. And again, we're letting x equal to 0. So sort of simplifies down to y minus 2z equals 5. Notice here we have two equations and two unknowns. So we can figure out what the point is where these, where these things come together. Um, where, the, where, the, where that line intersects the yz plane. And so notice that we have negative 2z in both places. Actually, let's just use our matrices. So we can use our matrices to solve this thing. I enter a two by three matrix with coefficients negative six, negative two, 15, one, negative two, and five. And then I quit. I go back to the matrix command, choose map, scroll till I find REF, and then go back to my matrix to grab matrix A, which is where I typed it, and REF of A. It's in decimal form, so I'm going to convert it to fractions because we like fractions in this class. And after using our matrices, we get that y is equal to negative 10 sevenths, and z is equal to negative 45 over 14. So what this is telling us is it's telling us that the point, pardon me, so the point zero, negative 10 sevenths, comma, negative 45 over 14 lies on both planes. And if it's on both planes, that means it's also on the line. Okay, so we were looking for the point and we found the point that lies on both planes and the line. Okay, this lets us write down the equation for that intersecting line. So our line, <laughs> be some r, which is equal to the point 0 comma negative 10 over 7 comma negative 45 over 14 plus t times the direction vector, which was 14 for 15. We can find the direction or the symmetric uh, equations for this line pretty easily. So notice we have that, um, that x is equal to 14t, y is equal to negative 10 sevenths uh, plus 4t, and z is equal to negative 45 over 14 plus 15t. And so our symmetric equations happen when we just solve for t. So you get t equals, if we solve for the x's, we get x over 14 equals, solve for the y. So you're going to get y plus 10 over 7 quantity over 4 equals z add the 45 over 14 through by 15. So there's our um, there's our uh, symmetric equations for the line of intersection. In D, we want to find the angle between the two planes. So recall that we have the normal vectors um, for both planes. So we had that the first normal was equal to 
3, negative 6, negative 2. And the second normal was equal to the vector 2, 1, negative 2. And so if we want to find the angle between the two planes, that would be the same as the angle between the normals. And if we want the acute angle, so it'll be an angle that is, um, yeah, that's acute. Um, if, uh, if we want to find an angle, we can use our dot product. So recall that A dot B equals magnitude of A, magnitude of B times the cosine of theta. And which will tell us that theta will equal the arc cosine of a dot b over magnitude of a, magnitude of b. So substituting all that stuff in, we need our theta to be the arc cosine of a dot b, so it'd be the dot product of these two uh, vectors, so 6 minus 6 plus 4, or 4. Over, we need the norm, so the square root of 9 plus 36 plus 4 is square root of uh, 49, or 7, times the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 4, or 3. So we want the square root, or we want the arc cosine of 4 over 21. And that would be our exact answer for the angle between the two planes. In this next section, we will talk about the distance between points, planes, and lines. And this is a relatively lengthy derivation, so hold on to your hats. So to find the distance d of the point P1, which is x1, y1, z1, to the plane ax plus by plus cz plus d equals 0, we pick a point on the plane and call it p naught, which is x naught, y naught, z naught. And so we're looking for this distance d here. And so we just pick sort of at random some point p naught that lives on the plane. Then the vector connecting p naught to p1, that would be this vector here, okay, uh, can be found as b equal to the p naught p equal to the vector x1 minus x naught, comma, y1 minus y naught, comma, z1 minus z naught. We know that the equation of the plane or we know the equation of the plane, so we know its normal vector is the normal a, b, c. And so using the given picture, we can think about distance in two ways. So a couple of different ways of doing it. First, you can think about this uh, distance using a right triangle. So consider the right triangle, and then the cosine of theta would be big D over the length of B. So here, Here's our theta um, right here. And so cosine would be the adjacent side D over the hypotenuse length of B. We also know that theta is the angle between the normal and B. So the cosine of theta equals N dot B over a magnitude N magnitude B. That's from our dot product. So putting them equal to each other, we get d over magnitude b equals n dot b over magnitude n magnitude b. Multiplying both sides by magnitude b, we get the d equals n dot b over the magnitude of n. But the dot product can be positive or negative, and the distance is always positive. So hence, we need to take the absolute value of this dot product. So the distance d would be n dot b 
magnitude over, sorry, absolute value over magnitude of n. So just to get this in the numerator, you have a absolute value because we need a positive number. In the denominator, you have a magnitude because we're still talking about vectors. All right, so we have our first representation for D. Our second representation for D. Uh, considering the magnitude of the projection or the component of P naught P onto the normal, that is, we want D equal to the component of B along N, and specifically, we want its absolute value. Once again, we would get absolute value of N dot B all over N. They're equal. So now we uh, can find the formula for the distance. So if D is equal to N dot B, absolute value over N, we can find uh, that dot product. So remember, the normal vector is ABC, and then B is the vector x1 minus x0 comma y1 minus y0 comma z1 minus z0. And then we can uh, evaluate our dot product, and the ends just chill in the, in the denominator, uh, going from here to here, all we're doing is distributing. So we have our um, uh, AX1, AX0, et cetera, et cetera, and then BY1, uh, BY0, et cetera, et cetera. We can recombine, and you'll notice that the stuff here at the end, oh, that's that D that we defined earlier. So this formula can be written succinctly as d, thing we're looking for, that distance, is equal to the magnitude of uh, ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 plus d all over the root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So that's our derivation. Um, just to be clear on what we just found, we just found a formula or the distance from a point to the plane. This formula here is one that you will want to, you want to know it exists. It exists, but don't memorize. Example eight, find the distance from point P1, which is 113, to the plane 3x plus 2y plus 6z equals 6. How convenient. We just learned a formula for this. So this distance is going to equal the absolute value of ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 plus d all over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay. And in case you're wondering what these things are, the a's, b's, and c's, those are the coefficients on the plane. And your x1, y1, and z1, well, that's coming from your point and the d is going to happen when you shift the six to the other side. And we got to shift that thing to the other side for it to work. So it'll be a negative six. Okay, so let's evaluate. So we have absolute value of uh, 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 6 times 3 minus 6. Again, remember we had to move the 6 to the left side. And this is all over square root of 3 squared or 9 plus 2 squared, which is 4, plus 6 squared, which is 36. And 
So I have three plus two is five plus 18 is 23 minus six is 17 over square root of 49, um, which is seven. So there's our distance from the point to the plane. To find the distance between two parallel planes, we find any points on one plane and calculate its distance to the other plane. We do the same to find the distance between a line and a plane, where the line and the plane are parallel. Example nine, find the distance between the parallel planes P1, which is x plus 2y plus 6z equals 1, and P2, x plus 2y plus 6z equals 10. Notice this sort of connects to that previous animation you'll notice that the first bit, the left side of both of these plane equations are identical, and it's only the right sides that vary. So they're just parallel planes to each other. So we need a point on one of these planes. Um, so let's not overthink. If we look at this first plane, just observe that if y was zero and z was zero, that x equal to 1 would make this true. So 1 plus 2 times 0 plus 6 times 0 would equal 1. Just sort of uh, took something that looked easy. So here, this is a point. Um, is a point on P1. And we could have just as easily chosen some other point or a point on P2. We're just arbitrarily arbitrarily choosing a point. And then we get to use the formula um, that we used in the previous example. And so we're gonna find the distance from this point that's on P1 to plane P2. And the distance from one zero zero to plane P2. So our distance is going to equal uh, the again that absolute value of ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 plus d. So our we've got one times x1, which is one, plus two times zero, plus six times zero, and then again remember we have to move the one to the other side, so minus one all divided by square root of one squared plus two squared plus six squared so it looks like our distance is one minus one. Oh, snap maybe you see what i did wrong i found the distance from a point to the plane but i grabbed the uh point i used the point same point in plane so i wanted to make sure i used this plane. And so instead of subtracting one, I need to be subtracting 10. That makes a little bit more sense. And so we will have one minus 10, which is negative nine, but it's an absolute value. So we want positive nine divided by the square root of 41. So there's our distance between the two planes. To find the distance between two skew or parallel lines, view the lines as lying on two parallel planes and then proceed as above. So note that we have to find the equation of a plane that includes one of the lines and is parallel to the other. So to find the distance between the skew lines L1, which is x over one equal to y minus one over negative one equal to z minus two over three, and L2, which is x minus 2 over 2, y minus equal to y minus 3 over negative 2 equal to z minus equal to z over 7. 
uh, we need to uh, take advantage of a little bit of cleverness. So notice that we have a vector that is uh, vector one, negative one, and three that is in the direction of L1. And we have a second vector, which is two, negative two, and seven, which is in the direction of L2. And so if we look at their cross products, so we could call this uh, V1, because it's in the direction of the first line, and V2, because it's in the direction of the second line. If we look at their cross product, V1 cross V2, This will equal uh, negative one plus or negative seven plus six, negative one, comma, negative is built into the formula, seven minus six, which is minus one, comma, negative two plus two or zero. So negative one, comma, negative one, comma, zero. So this is a normal vector that is perpendicular to both of these lines. Okay, let's also grab a point. Doesn't matter what point we grab, but perhaps we'll grab a point from uh, line one. It doesn't matter which point we grab on L1 or L2, but we need one point. So point from L1, Namely, let's grab the point that we see go through, which would be zero comma one comma two. And let's think about a plane that has this normal and this point. So together, these form a plane. So our plane is uh, negative x minus zero uh, plus or minus y minus one uh, plus zero times z minus two equals zero, which is a funny way of writing minus x minus y uh, equals negative one. Okay, so this is a plane. Let's think about this plane. Um, so the normal of this plane is negative one, negative one, zero. Mm -hmm. And so that normal is perpendicular to both of these lines, uh, which means that the lines must be parallel to this plane. Not only that, so, so we can see lines parallel to the plane. Not only that, we know that uh, line one uh, has shares a point with the plane. So line one must be on the plane. L1 is on the plane. So if we want to find the distance between the skew lines, we can now find, uh, we can sort of change the way the question is worded. So we're asking for the distance between the skew lines. Really what we're looking for is we're looking for the distance from the plane, plane to L2, and notice that L2 is uh, parallel to this plane. And so we can just grab any point off of L2, such as the point 2, 3, 0. So 2, 3, 0 is on L2. And so now we can find the distance from two, three, zero to the point negative or to the plane negative x uh, minus y equals negative one. So we're back to using that same formula. So our distance is going to be the absolute value 
of a times uh, times x naught. So I have minus one times two, minus one times three, plus zero times zero. And then we've got to move the one back to the other side again, because it's the d, so plus one, all over the square root of one plus one which tells us that the distance between the skew lines is, I've got negative five plus one, negative four in absolute value, four over the square root of two. Whew, that's a lot, but we made it all the way through and you now know everything there is to know about the equations of lines and planes. I have one pro tip that comes out of all this stuff is to try to visualize what you're doing. The more you can draw the picture or see it in your head, the easier it is. This isn't actually all that hard. It just feels like a whole bunch of formulas running out of the page. So have fun, practice hard, definitely don't procrastinate, and welcome to the world of the equations of lines and planes.